Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Faith Ministries, where we walk by faith and not by sight. It is Friday, July 25, 2021. And um, I'm coming to you with a message that is a little bit somber, but also it's an urgent call to arms for us as Christians. Now, I don't know whether you have realized or noticed that based on the world events today, we really are living in the end times, okay? So, things are happening that are beginning to fulfill Bible prophecy. And so now more than ever, it's important for us to be alert. It's important for us to stick close to God and stick to the Word of God, read the Word for ourselves, understand the Word, and apply the Word in our lives. But also what's more, even just as important, is not being selfish with the word of God for ourselves, but to be able to evangelize, right? Because Jesus commissioned us to make disciples of men. We are the light of the world. So the light shines and takes the darkness away. There's so much evil and darkness that's happening in the world today. And even in the spiritual realm, so many things are happening that are ushering us towards Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And so the question you really must ask yourself is, am I ready for this era that we are being ushered into? And also, when I hang out with my family, with my friends, people I love, and I know that they don't know God and they don't believe in God, am I doing what God commissioned us to do? How fulfilling is it or would it be for us just to, you know, get the light and keep it for ourselves and not share it with the people that we love? Because life is fragile. At any one moment, someone could die. But what was the state of their soul at the point that they departed? I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks, but really, really, if there's one thing that drew it home so much for me and gave me this sense of urgency and inspired me to make this video it was the fact that three weeks ago my first cousin actually got really sick back home and at first they thought she had malaria because she was delirious and had had a high fever and all of those things but what we found out quickly was that actually she was in the late stages of of having COVID-19 and so she was put on oxygen and all of this stuff. And I remember talking to my mom and saying, asking, does she even know God? Does she know the Lord? Um, my mom was like, oh, Susan, no, she's never, she's never really, you know, been about the things of God. And I was encouraging my mom to give her a call to talk to her. I personally called um, her daughter and wanted to uh, have her pass the phone over so I could speak with her. But at that moment, she was unresponsive. And... Um, there was nothing that we could do in that specific moment, right? So I really began to pray, guys, because it was grieving my heart that my cousin was at death's door, essentially, and she did not know the Lord. She had never really been um, concerned with the things of God, and it really grieved my heart, and I really began to pray to God. And I called upon God because... You know, for, for those of you who have watched some of my earlier videos, I did mention, and I have mentioned before, that when I was nine years old, God appeared to me. The Spirit of God appeared to me when I was nine years old. And I have a covenant with God because the Lord asked me at that time when I was nine, what is the one thing you would want me to do for you? And um, I did say that I wanted all my family to get saved. And then slowly, people in my family began to give their lives to Christ, okay? So, as I was grieving in my heart for my cousin, I remembered my, the covenant I had with God and I prayed. And I said, Lord, you know I have a covenant with you and I know you're a God who doesn't lie. So, please, whatever, whatever, in however it, it happens, I don't know how it will happen, 
but I want my cousin to get to know you before she passes on, if she passes on. And so I prayed, I said, God, remember, remember your covenant. And I know that you are a God, you're a covenant God who keeps his covenant promises. And I want you to keep your covenant promise to me, the covenant that we made together when I was nine years old. And so we prayed, I prayed. And that weekend, my husband and I, we were going off to Delaware to visit his cousin. And we're going to spend the weekend there and... As we were on our way driving to out of state, my chest began to kind of feel really tight and I was beginning to have trouble breathing. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm feeling this way, okay? But I just kept praying in the car, praying in the car, praying in the car. And I went to my, we went over, we had a good time. But that evening around nine something, I, I just told my husband, hey, I'm going to go upstairs to pray. I need to spend some time with God. So I left these guys downstairs and I went upstairs to pray. And I, I closed the door behind me in the bedroom that we had been assigned. And as I, I just sat on the bed, I sat on the bed to read my Bible verses before I could begin to pray. I got a text message and the text message was from my brother, my elder brother. And he said, oh, I'm, you know, sadly, Susan didn't make it. She's going to be with the Lord. And I just burst out crying. I just cried for the longest time because I was like, oh, you know, I just was very distraught. So my heart was very heavy. I didn't know what had happened in between then. I do know that at some point earlier that day, she had kind of become lucid. And she was talking, uh, but I didn't really know if anyone had been able to reach her to, to, to preach the gospel to her and give her the opportunity to give her life to Christ. So clearly at this point, when I was being told she had passed on, I wasn't even really mourning the death. I was just grieving, like, where is the soul going? So the next day... I was able to call back home and people were making arrangements and this and that. And I spoke to my mom and my mom had spoken to her daughter and said that, you know, this, my cousin had woken up, she had become lucid. Um, and she talked about some dreams she had had that were like not good dreams at all. And then she said, you know what, you need to pray for me and this and that. And my second cousin, which is her daughter, is born again so my second cousin said well would you like me to pray for you and she said yes please pray for me and so my cousin and her daughter spent some time praying together but I, my my cousin led my my cousin's daughter was able to lead her to christ and then when my cousin lost consciousness again she never recovered so I praised the, I, my heart jubilated when I had that news and I was, I praised the Lord and I was thankful because number one, God is a covenant God who keeps his covenant promises. But number two, as much as I was sad that she was gone, I knew now that she was in a better place. But then as I sat and began to think about this though, guys, I was like, you know, I began to have a sense of urgency about salvation okay i began to look at people differently not people stopped being people to me like i look at when i look at someone nowadays i look at their soul and i care about their soul and i wonder do they know christ and what can i do to begin to preach the word to them to open up and give them the opportunity to get to know jesus you know because the Bible says, Jesus said that the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So many people in the world are, are missing God and they don't even know that that's what they're missing. They're going about looking for all these supernatural experiences. They're going about trying to fill the gaps in their heart with material things or with relationships or with money and, and all these things. And they don't realize that it's, Jesus that they need, that it is salvation that they need. And so what happens if you gain the whole world? In fact, Jesus asked, but you lose your soul. 
Look at all these rich people like Oprah who are engaged in the New Age movement. What happens to their soul? We're here on earth for a very short amount of time. But eternity is forever, guys. And so I began to have a sense of urgency to say, why? Why did we even have to wait until the last minute to be rushing the gospel of salvation to someone on their deathbed? What about all the years we called them and had conversations and laughed with them and had opportunities to preach the word of God? We are called to be the light of the world. We are called to shine the light for those who, are, who cannot see. Because where light is, then the darkness is dispelled. So it's very selfish of us to hold on to the gospel and keep it for ourselves. To not share it with people we love that we know don't know Christ. Because ultimately, if we die and we go to heaven as a result of salvation... What about our loved ones who don't know about salvation? They die and end up going to hell and hell is forever. They will be asking, why didn't you tell me about the gospel? Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? The gospel is free. Salvation is free. The blood of Jesus was shed for all. And so some people genuinely are brought up in households where God wasn't a part of the equation and they don't know any better. And so what are we doing as Christians to be the laborers that God has called us to be? Jesus, when, you know, when he was speaking to his disciples before he departed to heaven, he said, go and make disciples of men. So we are commissioned as believers to share the gospel in our own small circle of influence. You don't have to start a YouTube channel. You don't have to, you know, go on a pulpit somewhere. But each and every day we are interacting with so many people and we can plant the seed of the word of God in their hearts and do our small part in leading people to Christ. Guys, this is so serious. And I feel this sense of urgency. Like when I see people, I don't just see people anymore. I see souls. The harvest is ready. People are ready. People are looking for the word of God. People are searching and they don't even know it's God that they need. So how selfish do we have to be to keep the light for ourselves, right? That parable, we got the light and we hid it under the bed. We should put it up on a banner somewhere that the world may see the light, that through our, our lifestyle and who we are and our interactions with people, we can inspire people to come to Christ. So I want to encourage you guys, don't just be a lazy Christian. Don't just be a selfish Christian who gets something good for themselves and doesn't share it with the world. Begin to ask the Holy Spirit to show you the many ways that you can use to begin to reach people, even within just your small circle of influence, maybe a co-worker that you work with or a family member that you love that you know doesn't know God. Begin to plant the seed in them. Give them the opportunity, the opportunity to receive or reject Jesus, but you would have done your part. It is our commission as believers to do that. It is our commission as believers to do that. I remember once I shared a story about a guy who was born again, and the Spirit had been putting it in his heart to minister to his next to his neighbor. But he kept brushing it off. Oh, oh yeah, I don't even know how I'm going to start doing that. We always are afraid that we're going to be judged. We don't know how to start these conversations. And so finally, one night, this man had a dream. And in that dream, the neighbor was burning in hell. And the neighbor was saying, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? I Look at me now. Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? Why didn't you tell me about salvation? And so when he woke up, because the dream seemed so real, he was very, very startled. He said, you know what? I'm going to go preach the word to this guy. So he goes across the street, knocks the door, asks to speak to the guy. And the wife tells him, well, unfortunately, my husband passed away last night. So we're here for a short amount of time. Eternity is forever. It is selfish of us to have the gospel and have the gift of salvation and keep it for ourselves without sharing it with the rest of the world. 
So my hope and my prayer for you is that as you listen to this video, the Holy Spirit will convict you to begin to find a way to share. Share the gospel, guys. Share this video with other people. Share the word with other people. Because hell is no joke. When that guy in the Bible died and went to hell and was begging and saying, let me go and tell my brothers so that and warn my brothers so that they don't come here. What was he told? Well, they have, the, they have Moses and they have all these other people. If they can't listen to the prophets, then it's their issue. So there are tons of people in hell right now and going to hell right now as I make this video that find themselves in a position where they wish, they wish they could come back for just one more minute to be able to commit their lives to Christ. So let's not do the selfish thing, guys. Let's do the generous thing. Let's preach the word. Let's get the word out in our own small way. And let us begin to harvest for God because Every soul is valuable. That's the way I look at it. That's the way Jesus looked at it. That's why he died on the cross for our sins. If we hadn't been told the gospel and hadn't been given the opportunity to receive Christ, we wouldn't be here. So somebody shared the word with us and the Holy Spirit convicted us to give our lives to Jesus. If all those people sat on it for themselves, we would not be here as well. So we have to pay this forward. Guys, I just hope that when you finish watching this video and you look around you, find the closest five people to you that don't know Jesus. And just share, just share with them about the love of Jesus and what he did. And lead them to Christ. And um, I think what I'll probably do as well, maybe later on, is post a video, just a short prayer to lead someone to Christ that can help you or help somebody else that you could share with someone else. But we have to believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess with our mouth that God raised him from the dead. We have to make Jesus the Lord of all. God doesn't want 90% of us. 99% of us, he wants all of us. And so also we need to be able to lead lives of complete surrender to God. I love you guys. As you live your lives, keep the end in mind, not just in terms of your own spiritual walk with God to get you to heaven, but look at all your loved ones. That way when we pass away from this world, whenever we do, we can mourn and, gr and grieve the loss of a loved one because we will miss them, but not because we don't know what their lot is in eternity. And we will also know that we did what we could, that we presented opportunities for people in our lives to get to know Jesus. And it's a choice. They can choose to accept him or not, but at least you would have done your part. Jesus came down from heaven. He did his part. The Holy Spirit was imparted upon the apostles in the book of Acts. Jesus commissioned them to make disciples of men. They did their part. You got saved because somebody did their part. So what about you? Are you doing your part? It's never too late to start. So I hope that you will be inspired to start there's so many people out there whose destinies are literally are tied to yours whose future in the kingdom is tied to your ability to step out in bold faith and be the joshuas of this generation to fight the spiritual war and to win souls for christ love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.